Hello, I'm Judy Selesnick, and I'd like to welcome you to Meet the Candidates, a community program presented by PAT, Peabody Access Telecommunications. As you may know, former State Representative Cole recently resigned, and we must hold a special election to fill this vacancy to ensure that Peabody has adequate representation in the state legislature. Also, as you know, this primary election will be held on Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016, and the final election is just four weeks later on Tuesday, March 1st. This is also Super Tuesday, the day of the presidential primary election in Massachusetts. We have invited all five primary candidates for state representative to participate in these interviews to allow you, the folks at home, to meet the candidates and become familiar with them and their views and priorities as we move forward to the final election. There are two Republican candidates, Jacqueline Corvo and Stephanie Peach. There are three Democratic candidates, James Matsoulis, Thomas Walsh, and Craig Welton. Additionally, there is an unenrolled candidate, Christopher Gallagher, and he will be on the ballot on the final election on Tuesday, March 1st. He isn't part of this show since he is running up unopposed and he has no primary and will already be on the final ballot. I'm pleased to welcome Jacqueline Corvo to meet the candidates. Hi Jacqueline. Hi Judy. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, so nice to meet you. Um, why are you running for this office? Well, Judy, I have a very strong sense of community service that my parents instilled in me, my grandparents instilled it in me, and it was really passed down through generations. Um, uh, my parents, my grandparents are actually immigrants, so they pass it down through their parents, um, from their parents to my parents, and then to me. Um, we, we came over into this country from China about two generations ago, and my family opened restaurants. They did a lot for the community. My mother always worked um, to teach English to students in Boston, trying to make people's lives better. So I think that was passed down to me. And I've also done a lot in Peabody, working with the um, Peabody Farmers Market. I also worked with Haven from Hunger, providing um, meals to people in low-income housing. So this would be the logical next step for me to take it to the State House and really be able to serve the people of Peabody in a very meaningful way. Oh, great. Well, you answered part of my next question, but can you tell us a little bit about yourself, both personally and professionally, and what qualifications you feel you have to be the next state representative? Well, I grew up in Peabody. I grew up right on Linden Road in South Peabody, and I just bought a house on Lynn Street in Peabody. And um, I'm a graduate of Simmons College, and I have a bachelor's degree in political science. And so I think that's part of my qualification, as I really do have a very good understanding of the way government works. But also, like I said, I've worked with city officials before. I have a very good relationship with our city councilors. But most of all, I think my biggest qualification for this job is that I have a very, very good working relationship with our governor. And that is something that I can really bring to the table. Um, we have a relationship one-on-one. -on -one. He's appointed me to one of his boards, actually, back in September. And it was very um, indicative of the potential that he sees in me. And I think that it's something that the people of Peabody have seen in me. Every time I meet new voters, they're very um, receptive to my message. They really appreciate that I take the time to listen. And I think that's my best quality is that I listen to them and I can bring that to Beacon Hill. And I can also make sure that Peabody has a seat at the table. Uh, what board were you named to? Um, the Board of Immigrants and Refugees. Oh, how nice. Yes, thank you. And what will that board do, basically? Well, actually, it's, it's an office that is federally funded mostly, but it's actually state workers that staff it. And I will be providing um, a lot of, how do you say, advisor, advisory to the governor, but also o oversight. oversight, but over the agency itself. We look at um, budgets, where resources need to be allocated, what, um, what we can do for immigrants and refugees coming into this country, what services need to be tweaked, what services maybe are missing. Um, we actually have a welcome package that we just started, and it's for immigrants and refugees coming into the state that really just wouldn't know where to go otherwise. And we give them step-by-step -step directions on um, how they can take advantage of the tools that we offer. Well, considering what's happening nationally, I'm sure that will be a major issue in the future. I think it will be, too. Um, what do you see as the major issues facing Peabody locally, and how would you address these at the state level? I think the top two issues I hear about um, are senior housing, um, housing costs are going up, taxes are always going up, they're on a fixed income, and I think the best thing that we can do 
is take advantage of the fact that we have Charlie Baker in office. He really is great at delivering local aid. He promised it on the campaign trail, and um, local aid is the key to keeping our taxes down. And also the second issue that I'm hearing about is the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. And the best thing we can do is focus on treatment and prevention. At this point, it's gotten to the, um, it really is an epidemic. It's so sad when I go to people's doors, and the only time people talk about it is when they've had someone who's been personally affected by it. So my, um, I think the first step I would take is to really spread the message about, you know, this has to be talked about before someone has a personal um, experience, a personal tragedy. We have to make sure this is an issue that is addressed publicly. We have to remove the stigma. And I actually volunteered for um, Arthur Buckley's son, um, Colton Buckley. He actually passed away of an overdose. And um, Arthur Buckley runs the 5K in Peabody to raise awareness and to remove the stigma from this disease. And I think it's really important to have people like that. And so an approach that no, not only removes the stigma, but focuses on um, prevention, education. Um, we have to work with law enforcement. We have to work with people in treatment centers. We really have to get people who know what they're talking about and know how to treat these people. Legislators don't necessarily know what's best for addicts, but we have to reach out to the people that do. Well, that sounds, it's a very noble cause. Very recently, Senate President Stan Rosenberg wrote a strong letter to Kinder Morgan regarding the pipeline. He's concerned because it will be running through his districts in western Massachusetts as well as many other regions, specifically as well as Peabody. And uh, I know that the mayor has done a lot to try to contact Kinder Morgan, but they have been rather standoffish. How do you think we can partner with uh, Senate President Rosenberg to help Peabody on this? Well, I'd also like to point out that the Kinder Morgan pipeline is not the only solution on the table for providing the energy that needs um, to be provided to keep our energy costs low. There is actually a company called Spectra that is offering an alternative solution which requires no additional pipeline. And that would entail actually removing a pipeline in um, southern Massachusetts on the South Shore, replacing it in the existing easement so that we wouldn't have to build a new one. It would make it safer. It would provide more energy. It would provide the energy that we need that the Kinder Morgan pipeline would actually provide. The only difference is Kinder Morgan has done a much better marketing job. Um, so I would take a step back and say this doesn't even have to happen. I actually haven't heard of that other alternative before. They did a very good job marketing Kinder Morgan. They must have a lot of money behind them. I would think so. But in case it is the Kinder Morgan that is going to be the priority, how do you think we can partner with Senate President Rosenberg and Peabody? Well, we have to listen to the residents. They're the ones that are living with the pipeline. Like we um, already know it's near a blast zone. That to me makes me nervous, and it absolutely makes residents nervous, and they have every right to be nervous about that. So we first of all have to listen to them, what their concerns are. We have to make sure that every single safety concern is addressed. And once that's taken care of, if it does come down to that pipeline going in, safety has to be a top priority. Mm -hmm. We went through this several years ago with another pipeline, the Maritimes Pipeline, that did go through Peabody. So uh, Peabody seems to be a prime spot for pipelines at the moment, I guess. Do you support the expansion of charter schools in Massachusetts? And if so, why? And if not, why not? Well, this is an interesting question because it's definitely really big across the Commonwealth. A lot of towns have taken um, a lot of steps to bring more charter schools in. But so far in Peabody, I haven't heard a calling for charter schools. Um, my issue with charter schools is that you're taking funding from the public schools. So it's, it's unfair. It's not fair to the students that are going to the public schools that um, kids that are, the charter schools actually get to select who's in their school. And it's kind of like private school. And that to me seems unfair to the kids whose parents do choose to send them to public school, that their education is being compromised because money's being taken out of the budget for kids who are going mm -hmm. to something akin to a private school. I know that it's sort of like a lottery system the way they do it in the charter schools, but you're right as far as the fact that they take the you know, per pupil cost away from the public schools when there is a charter school. Right. But I know that this is a big question statewide right. and not just for Peabody. Right. What do you see as some of the other issues uh, that you would like to work on if you were elected to the State House? I think my top priority would be to watch the tax dollars. And I know Governor Baker's taken a very strong stance. I just read an article in the Salem News about how he is um, looking to cut 
cut a lot of wasteful spending. And one of the things that I've seen that has become a big problem over the past um, 10 years with the previous administration was relying on one-time grants from the federal government. If we can get out of the habit of spending money as if we're going to keep getting those grants, they're one-time grants, they're not coming again. So when you initiate a program that needs to be sustained by taxpayer dollars, but you start it off with a one-time grant, how, how do you expect to not have to raise taxes or have to redistribute money in order to fund that program? Um, I know that our rating agencies have given us neg negative feedback for doing that, and it's something we really need to re-examine because it's hurting the taxpayer, it's hurting our bond rating, and um, it's just not good money management. Sounds like a very good point. I want to thank you for your views and opinions. I think that this will help the viewers at home to understand your political leanings and help them decide PBD's best representation. We have a few minutes. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the folks at home about sure yourself? Sure thing. I'd like to ask for your vote. Not only am I the most experienced person in the race because of my work with Governor Baker, but also I am very dedicated to making sure that every single one of your tax dollars gets spent the way that you would want it spent, so that the services that are delivered to you are, the service, are provided in a way that is accessible, that you can go talk to your state legislator. You could always be able to reach me once I'm elected. And um, it's just really important to me that your tax dollars are spent in a way that is transparent and in a way that is um, accountable. And that is the most important thing to me in this race is how your money is spent. Thank you. Well, good luck to you in the primary. Thank you, Judy. Oh, my pleasure. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm pleased to welcome Jim Demo Mitsoulis to meet the candidates. Hi, Jim. Hi, Judy. How nice are you? Nice to see you. Good. Thank you. Can you tell me why are you running for this office? Judy, I'm running for this office, the same reason I, I'm the city council right now, to help make Peabody a better place. Um, I have the experience, the knowledge, and the maturity to help Peabody go in the right direction. I, I would like to be your state representative to help our mayor help Peabody become a better place. It's my only, my only reason. There are no ulterior motives here. Um, I, I, I think that basically covers why I'm running. Jim, for people who might not know you, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, both personally and professionally, as well as what qualifies you to be a sure, state rep? Sure, sure. Um, I grew up in the East End. Uh, I grew up on Fulton Street. I was born in Greece, came here when I was three years old. I'll explain the demo because a lot of people ask me that. I was born Demetrius Mutsoulis, and when I went to high school, I took the Demetrius and, and put it in the English translation, which is James, and that's who I am, James Mutsoulis. Um, I went to the Carroll School, Peabody High School. Um, I come from a family of eight children. My dad was a leather worker. He worked in the tanneries of Peabody. My mother was a stay-at-home stay mom. Uh, my brothers, uh, uh, all had their own businesses in this city. Um, you know, we did a lot for this. We grew up in this city and know this city well. What qualifies me, I, uh, beside being the city council for 12 years, um, um, I ran my own businesses. I had a temp agency for many years. I put people to work. Um, I did a lot for Ward 3, which, if is that what you want me to get into, Judy? I don't well, know. Well, just what your qualifications are and what you think you could do um, from your experience as a state representative. Well, as my qualifications, I just told you what they are. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot for Ward 3, and I'm going to take that experience and bring it to the State House. I'm a person who gets things done, and the people in Ward 3 will tell you that. And I'll give you three different examples of what I'm talking about. Um, when I got on the city council, the number one issue at the time was the Tremont Street Fire Station. It was slated to be closed. I got together with the neighborhood. They came, they got me and said, Jim, we want that station open. I don't think anybody else could have done what I did. We did the research to to bring all the information we needed before the city council to prove to them that that station was vital. We went to the state fire marshal's office in Boston. We got all the information we needed, and we presented our case. And 
that station is open today, and this is 30 years later, and as long as I'm in Peabody, that station's going to stay open. That's number one. Number two, uh, down on Holly Street, it was slated to be zone, rezoned. There was a former congressman that came to rezone that area and put apartment buildings in an already congested neighborhood. The neighborhood did not want it. We got together with the Salem City Council of their neighborhood and my neighborhood. We hired uh, Bill DeMento, a land attorney from Swampskit, to come down and we fought that issue for five years. And the housing market collapsed and the, uh, the applicant backed out of that deal. Let me tell you what you got out of this. You got the stop and shop is there now and so is the uh, uh, the Holy Ghost Society. They're there because of my doings. We stopped that area from building hundreds of apartment units in an already congested neighborhood that would have required more schools, depleted your city services. These are the kind of things I did for the city of Peabody. And I'm going to take my experiences on knowing how to do things to the State House to make Peabody a better place. I'm going to give you one more incident only because you're, we talked about this. There was a fire site. It was the old A.C. Lawrence building on Webster Street. The North River Task Force at the time recommended putting a mixed use in there, which would have meant, again, hundreds of apartment buildings. That was one of the recommendations. Again, we got together with the neighborhood and we put a stop to that. And one of the things I said is that is an industrial site, and if we could bring a business in there, uh, we will change the course of that site. Well, what I did was I went into Boston, I went to the Chamber of Commerce and asked them who was looking to relocate. I found a company and I brought them to Peabody, I pushed it through the city council today, that's Webster Street Industrial Park. It's employing people as opposed to hundreds of apartment units in an already congested neighborhood. That is what I did for Peabody. I know how to do things. I know how to get things done. I brought jobs to Peabody. Those are one of the, th those are one of the, th one of the issues that I believe Peabody is in desperate need of, bringing jobs. Jim, what do you see as the major issue facing Peabody right now, and, and how do you think as a state representative you could help with that? Well, let me tell you, Judy. <clears throat> One of the issues that really, really bothers me, I know it's not just a city issue now, it's a statewide issue, and it's being brought up now, but I gotta tell you, 30 years ago when I first got on the city council, I made two motions, and let me tell you one of them where this was one of my first ones. Do the research and you'll, you, you'll go to the city clerk's office and you'll see that I said 30 years ago we had a drug problem in this city, an opiate problem. Back then we called it a heroin problem. Well today I think everybody is aware we have a heroin product problem, not just in Peabody, in the state, everywhere. Um, in the past decade, we've lost 6,600 of our kids in Massachusetts. That is a disgrace. Um, we have a governor who is finally doing something about it. He's a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I commend him highly for the work he's doing with our drug problem today. And if I get to the State House, I'm going to ask the governor to put me on one of his committees so that we can continue to try and save our kids. Well, that's pretty important these days. Very recently, Senate President Stan Rosenberg wrote a strong letter to Kinder Morgan regarding the pipeline. He is concerned because it will be running through much of his districts in western Massachusetts and many other regions. How can Peabody partner? I know that Mayor Betancourt has, has done a lot in trying to deal with Kinder Morgan, but how can we partner with Senate President Rosenberg uh, to, with Peabody and Peabody to help move this along? Well, I, uh, if you're asking me if I'm a state representative, 
listen, one of the things you've got to do is work with your, uh, work with your uh, Senate, your, uh, your, your House, the governor. You've got to work with all of them, Republican or Democrat. We've all got to work together on, on, uh, on trying to fight this issue. I, I'm also against the pipeline. Um, I think it's, uh, they have too much power, and where they got all this power, I don't know. But they will not even answer the mayor's letters when he, when he sends them to them. Um, all, I can, all I can do is add my influence, whatever influence I have as a state rep, to try and work to, uh, to solve this problem. Okay. Jim, um, do you support the expansion of charter schools in Massachusetts? If you do, why? And if not, why? Well, there's two ways of answering that. You know, the charter schools, they say, is going to take away from financing on one end. You know, uh, I, I really have not formed a strong opinion on it yet, but it's something I am going to look into. Okay, so it's something yeah. that you're interested it's in. It's something, of course, I'm interested in it, yep. Well, what do you see as some of the other issues that you would like to work on on behalf of PBD at the state level? Well, I'll tell you, Judy. Let me give you two issues that bother me. Everybody in this city pays homeowners insurance, car insurance, health insurance, and we get nothing back. I'll give we you being the city uh, of Peabody? I'm talking about everybody, oh, right? Okay. City of Peabody, everybody. The state, city of Peabody. Um, you make a, a claim to your insurance company, and they want to drop you, or they, you know, they don't want to pay you. And and uh, where is all their money going to? If if you make a claim, they're going to drop you. Are your insurance rates going to go up? Why are we paying insurance? I never understood that. If you make a claim, you're being punished. Um, and what they'll do is they'll take you, and, they'll, and if they drop you, uh, you've got to go. Uh, they they uh, tell you who is going to pick you up, and your insurance doubles. And it's, it, it just doesn't make sense. Why are we paying insurance? That is what, those are one of the people that I'm going to go after myself to find out where are, their, where are their profits going to? Why is it that people are being punished? Um, on the 11 o'clock news a couple nights ago, down in Worcester area, they had a whole group of people who lost their, their home insurance because of last year's snowstorm. And these people, uh, their insurance doubled, and some of them couldn't even get insurance. I'm, I'm still following up on on what's going on with them. But that's, that's one, one thing. Now, the other thing is your uh, prescription drugs, OK? You, the, uh, the discrepancy in the cost of your prescription drugs makes no sense. In one pharmacy, you could you could see the price of a prescription being $450. I've checked this out. And the same prescription in another pharmacy is $17. This is making no sense. And, and who are the people who are suffering? It's all of us. It's the elderly. Uh, PBS had a story on, uh, in, and they were saying that in 2013, one out of five elderly are no longer taking their prescription, and if they are, they're only taking portions of what they're supposed to take. And why? Because of the cost. You I know, just Jim, explained. that's a really important issue. It really that is. That is an issue that I'm, I'm, I feel very strong on, and those are one of the ones I'll address with the state house. I want to thank you for your views and opinions, and I think that this will help the viewers at home to understand your political leanings and help them decide Peabody's best representation. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like the citizens of Peabody to know in maybe 45 seconds or less so that you can say to them? Well, <clears throat> most of you know who I am. Um, um, thank you. The election is February 2nd. 
I've put a lot, I've put my life into this city, and I think most of you people know that. And um, I'm a good Ward 3 representative, and I'll be a great state representative. Uh, Judy, thank you very much for having me, and uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Well, good luck to you, Jim, <laughs> in the primary. Thank you. I'm pleased to welcome Stephanie Peach to meet the candidates. Hi, Stephanie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, tell me, why are you running for this office? You know, so I've been working for the state for the past uh, over two years, and for most of that time I've worked for Representative Leah Cole, working for the people of Peabody. So I really loved what I did as a legislative aide. I was sad to leave in November. Um, but I get to help people one-to-one, -one, and that's something that I love to do, and to help people fix their problems, um, whether it be something about unemployment insurance or where they're going to get money for, to heat their house in the wintertime. That's something that I love doing every day at the State House. And as a uh, legislator, I think you have an opportunity to Im influence the policies and draft your own legislation to help fix those problems so they don't, they're not problems anymore. And I think you get to affect people on a broad scale across the Commonwealth. And I would love to continue to do the work with the constituents, but also be able to influence policy as well. Oh, great. So you've had a lot of experience, is what you're saying. Yes. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself, both personally and professionally, and what qualifications you have to be our next state representative. Okay. So I have my master's in public administration, which I earned last year from UMass Boston. I also have my bachelor's degree in political science and history. So I've been, and as I just mentioned, I've been working at the State House, doing the work um, alongside the representative for the past two years. So I grew up here in Peabody. I went K through 12 Peabody Public Schools. I graduated Peabody High in 2009. My husband's also a lifelong resident of Peabody. He graduated in 2007. Um, I grew up on Linfield Street in Peabody and have since moved to Fulton Street. I bought a house two years ago with my husband um, and we lived there with our dog Sandy. So I, I really think this is a great community. I, I had a so many opportunities growing up here in Peabody and I would love to continue that on and raise my own family here in Peabody but to to do that I'd like to make Peabody a better place to live the best city it can be um, that I can raise my own family in. Great. Um, what do you see as the major issues facing Peabody locally and how would you address those? I think the biggest issue we have locally is our taxes continue to go up, our property taxes. And I know we are the lowest, um, you know, the mayor says we're the lowest in Essex County, and, and that's great. But uh, being a homeowner here in Peabody, I see an increase in my taxes every year, and I don't always see an increase in the value of my home. So um, I think we have a lot of people, especially our elderly population, who are on fixed incomes, and they can't afford these increases every single year, and they're being forced out of their homes, which is so unfortunate for someone um, that's in the middle of their retirement, and they've really planned everything out the way you think you're supposed to, and then in the middle of retirement, they're forced out of their homes uh, due to property tax increases. Uh, that's one of the biggest issues we face here in the city, I think, and, and as well how as... How would you address that? Um, I think what we need to be doing is uh, looking at our state budget and cutting down um, and reforming our state agencies that are wasting our tax dollars. And f with that, then taking those tax dollars and bringing them back to our uh, cities and towns. This isn't an issue that's only facing people of Peabody. It's people across the state are facing the same issue. So I think, you know, we need to, on the state level, prioritize and do the people justice with their tax dollars because we continue to waste them um, in, I would say, every agency at the state level. And we're not, we're not providing the services that we should be providing as a state, and we're not doing them uh, efficiently. And we're wasting money, money that could be used for our cities, for our roads, and for our education system. So you're basically saying spend the money more wisely and more local aid coming back? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, very recently, Senate President Stan Rosenberg wrote a strong letter to Kinder Morgan regarding the pipeline. He's concerned because it will be running through the districts, his districts in western Massachusetts and many other regions. How can Peabody 
partner with him on this. I know that Maya Betancourt has been, you know, really vocal about writing letters and trying to get together with Kinder Morgan, but now that the Senate president has stepped in, I'm wondering if you think there's a way we can partner. No, absolutely. Um, so this issue came about while I was working in the State House, actually. So I've done a lot of research on, you know, the federal regulations and the um, the state regulations and the Constitution and what we can do as a city to combat this. And one of the things we can do as a city, as residents here who are opposed to this, we can advocate to our state representatives and our senators and to our federal representatives that this is something that you know it's going to be dangerous for our city it's it's not going to benefit our residents the way we're being told it will benefit us um, the majority of our homes here aren't hooked up to natural gas so you know how is that even a, a financial benefit to us I understand there's a there's a need for more energy so sources in the Commonwealth but this isn't even guaranteed to stay here I, I think most of it will go overseas or into Canada and I, I worked with Leah Cole on this issue. She was opposed to the pipeline. I've already pledged to um, to the people of Peabody that I will oppose the pipeline, and that's something I would do. I would partner with the Senate president. Um, he has great standing there being in his position and being opposed to this. I think that we could bring a vote to the floor to make sure this doesn't happen. Great. Do you support the expansion of charter schools in Massachusetts? If so, why? That's a difficult question. Uh, if not, why? <laughs> okay. I support the idea of charter schools and the principle of charter schools in theory. Um, from what I understand and from what I've done research on, we have a big issue with the way we fund charter schools, which affects our public schools. I do think people need to have a choice of where to educate their children, and I think charter schools are a great way to do that. And we've seen charter schools work wonders for um, for underprivileged children in underprivileged communities. Uh, we don't have a charter school here in Peabody. I don't expect one to open soon. Um, so at this time, I really don't know enough about charter schools and how they operate to say I would support expanding them, but I, I do support the idea in principle. I just think we need to work on the funding part of it to make sure it works and it's not taking away from our public education. Well, basically, it does take away from the public education because it's a per-pupil cost, and if it goes to a charter school, it doesn't go to the public school. So I think that, you know, that's a, a major issue with charter schools. Yeah, I think if they can, if they can change the way that they do the funding instead, um, and I think we, we experience even issues with out-of-district placements with the funding that way, too. Even, you know, the students going to our vocational school, the Essex Tech, there are some issues with the funding for those students as well that causes us to lose money here in Peabody. Um, and we need to work on adjusting those so that we can make sure you know, students can get the best education where they, where they or their parents choose to get it, but also that the money allocated for each student isn't, isn't harming other students. Okay. Um, what do you see as any other issues that you would like to work on? Well, I'd really like to work on reforming two of our state agencies, um, Department of Children and Families, DCF, and DTA, Department of Transitional Assistance. You know, unfortunately, we've seen you know, the, the horrible, horrible stories that have come out of DCF. Um, we have you know, children who are, are dying under our watch, children who are you know, being abused in our foster care systems. We need to address that. Um, I think that's a, that's a deep written problem within our agency and it's more about the structure of the agency. I think funding is important but we also have to rearrange some things within that agency to make sure it's doing the best for our children. They're the most vulnerable children in our state and we need to, we should, we should be doing a lot better than we are. Um, I've spoken with social workers who work there. They want to help people. You don't get into social work because you know you don't really care you have a, a, a deep drive to help people and make a difference and with the caseloads that these uh, caseworkers have they can't really make much of a difference in these children's lives because they're so overworked and overwhelmed and they're traveling across the across the state with 20 kids um, that they're responsible for and that's that's too much to ask and it's it doesn't do anybody uh, any good it doesn't do good for our workers and it doesn't do good for our children um, we also need to reform the mission of DCF. The mission right now is to is based on reunification of families, and that's not always what's best for the child. And I think if we can change the mission of DCF to be uh, to act in the best interest of the child, we would see some differences happening here. We would operate differently. Um, 
There are, I know that they've always been saying that they need more caseworkers and yes. smaller caseloads. Absolutely. We definitely need more caseworkers, and we need qualified caseworkers. We need qualified social workers working in DCF, and they need to have smaller caseloads. I know that they've asked for smaller caseloads, and that's something I would support as a legislator. I think we need to work towards that, um, and if we can do that, then we're going to benefit our most vulnerable population. About DTA, Department of Transitional Assistance, I've heard from many people when I worked at the State House that they're on transitional assistance, they're in our welfare system, but they want to get out. But it's so hard to get out because if you work a little bit harder, you lose so many of your benefits. And so I think we need to put a gradu like, um, gradually take people off of the thing, off of welfare as they work harder, as they earn more money, not just oh, you, you made an extra $20 this week, well, we're going to take $200 of assistance from you. You can't, you can't make that decision as a single mom um, working two jobs. You can't, you, you know, what, there is no decision. You have to work less and take the money. I think if we change our system to help people transition out of our welfare system, we'll do better not only with our tax dollars, but we'll help people live independently, and I think that's what everyone does want to do at the end of the day. Well, I think that it's really helpful to let people earn a decent living to eventually wean themselves off of public assistance. Absolutely. So just finding the right way is it's the hard part. It's proven difficult. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for your views and opinions. I think this will help the viewers at home to understand your political leanings and help them decide Peabody's best representation. Is there anything else that you would quickly like to tell the citizens of Peabody about yourself? Yeah, so I'd just like to again reiterate that I've been working uh, at the State House for the last two years for the people of Peabody, and I'd love for you to send me back up to Beacon Hill to continue that constituent service, but also to start influencing our state policies. I have the ideas, I have the energy, and I have the experience, so please consider me for your vote on February 2nd. Well, good luck to you in the primary. Thank you. I'm pleased to welcome Tom Walsh to meet the candidates. Tom, why are you running for this office? Well, that's a great question, a mm -hmm. uh, good one to start off with. Um, I'm running because I believe that I am probably um, uniquely qualified to serve as state representative. Uh, as you know, I served uh, in the House back in the uh, mid-80s to early 90s, um, served on the school committee for a term. I've served on the city council twice, once back in the early 80s, and, and again, I uh, was just reelected to my second term on my first term, fourth term, depending on how you look at it. But I think I bring a unique set of skills to the table and ready to step into that job on day one with a very, very small learning curve. Um, I've been in the building, I know the building, I know the process. Um, you know, issues obviously are something that um, we work on on a, a daily and, and, and monthly basis that new things come in. So you have to be ready for all of that. But um, I think that Peabody needs a representative who's ready on day one to step in because this is an unexpired term and we this is the second time in just over two years that we're without a state representative. Um, and I think it's important that somebody who is well-versed can step in and advocate for Peabody because we right now do not have an exclusive representative for the city of Peabody and I think I am the best person to go in and advocate for our community. So no on the job training for you? I think very little on the mm -hmm. job training. Yeah, I've, I've, as I said, done it before and uh, uh, I think I am best suited to, to step in and, and advocate for the city. Well, I know you answered a little bit of my uh, next question in your last response, but okay. can you tell us something about yourself, both personally and professionally? And you did say what qualifications okay. you have, but what would make sure. you a good state rep? Um, well, uh, by way of background, I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Peabody. Uh, grew up on Linfield Street and actually right now own the home that I grew up in. Uh, oh, nice. uh, we moved back, well, when, when the kids were small. And uh, it's been a great place for us to raise our children and, and, and both have uh, benefited from the, the public school system here in Peabody. Um, I'm a graduate of Salem State College uh, with a degree in political science and I am a funeral director. Uh, about 10 years or so ago, I went back to school and went two years nights to get my funeral directing license and I work here at the Conway Cale Broder Funeral Home in Peabody. Um, so that also brings me a, a, another set of skills. I think you learn um, when dealing with families uh, how to listen. I think I've become a much better listener than maybe I was mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years ago. Um, 
but you understand that there are a lot of things going on in people's lives uh, across the community, whether it be from my funeral directing uh, job or being a city councilor, it, just being a neighbor. Um, so you learn all those things. Um, married to my wife, Mary, we have two children who are, uh, well, Elizabeth's grown, she's uh, 25, hard to believe, and um, Sean is um, at Suffolk University in his second year. Well, great. Um, what do you see as the major issues facing Peabody locally, and how would you address these at the state level? Well, I think there are a lot of issues. Uh, where do we begin? Mm. Obviously, major? <laughs> obviously um, I think money is your most important thing. When, when we're dealing with the state budget, it's uh, imperative that if I'm the representative, I'm fighting every day for our fair share of, of the budget and uh, the opportunities that I may get from that to benefit Peabody. Uh, whether it be state grants that we go after or, uh, you know, obviously fighting for as much local aid as we, we can get. Um, the flooding, obviously, is an issue that will be ongoing, and we need state assistance. The mayor needs a partner, somebody he can pick up the phone and say, hey, could you call this agency or uh, whether it be uh, DEP or any other agency um, to assist us as we um, tackle that problem. That's ongoing and will go on for, for generations to come, I'm afraid. But... Well, that's bit a really by bit, good we'll, point about the mayor needing a partner up there. He does need a partner, and I think uh, we've worked well together the last couple of years on the, uh, as I've been on the council. Uh, and he appointed me back before I was on the council to his economic advisory council, and I've worked with him on some issues. Uh, specifically, mine are related to the uh, Centennial Park area. Um, you know, improvements slightly, uh, you know, slowly but surely we're, we're making progress there. Um, the opioid crisis, uh, sadly, is something that every city in town is grappling with. And, um, you know, I, I had a conversation not too long ago with a district attorney. Um, and we talked about a lot of different things. And, and part of it is, look, we, we want treatment programs for, for addicts. And, and it's, it's, you know, we, we have this, I think, image, I think, sometimes that an addict is someone who is down and out on his luck and, you know, penniless. And that's not the case. Uh, this addiction has hit every demographic that we know, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's a serious problem because if we don't address it, our crime rate will continue to go, uh, to, to climb. Um, and they need help for that. Um, the other part of that, though, is that we need to maintain the minimum mandatory sentences for those who are selling the drug in the first place. Because if we didn't have the dealers, the addicts wouldn't have access to the drugs. So we can't... We can't just say it's a problem with uh, addiction without addressing the fact that there are those bad people who are out there and they are preying on the, the people who um, need help. So we have to be vigilant in enforcing the laws and penalizing the criminals who are selling the, uh, the drugs to, to those who are using them. So it's, it's uh, all encompassing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big problem. Um, not everything is a problem, uh, issue-wise. Some of them are more challenges, and I would say a challenge is the pipeline issue uh, that will be ongoing. And my concern ab about the pipeline, and part of it is not in the district that I would represent, although I look at this district as if I represent four wards plus two precincts in Ward 5, I represent the entire city. So. Um, Don't let Ted spell uh, well, here. You I'll, I'll work with him. I'm not trying to steal his work, but let's be honest. Um, if somebody called from Ward 6 and had an issue, I, couldn't, I wouldn't say, oh, gee, you can't talk to me. You have to talk to Repres Representative Speliotis. I would work with them and work with, with Representative Speliotis' office as well. But the pipeline issue to me is a concern mostly because of where they wanted to locate it, which is right, right through our Independence Greenway. Um, you know, the city invested a lot of money and was uh, the beneficiary of grants to make this a nice area. And if you see any given day, you go uh, on that pathway and there are people walking or biking um, and it's a beautiful area. You get back in, in that, that area and sometimes you forget you're in Peabody. And I don't wanna see that destroyed. I want those neighbors protected because there's a lot of issues beyond just digging up the area. Uh, there's blasting issues. There are you know uh, quality of life issues that they're all gonna have to deal with. and. Um, Unfortunately, it's uh, a group that comes in and says, this is where we want to put it, without any input from us. And uh, that concerns me greatly. 
You know, you have segued into my next question. Oh, again, Leslie. good. <laughs> um, very recently, Senate President Stan Rosenberg wrote a strong letter to Kinder Morgan regarding the pipeline. He's concerned because it will be running through his districts in western Massachusetts as well as many other regions. So I know that Mayor Betancourt has tried to do a lot with Kinder Morgan and they haven't been overly responsive. Right. How do you think if you were the state rep you would partner with Senator Ro uh, uh, Rosenberg to help move this along, especially on Peabody's behalf? Sure. First of all, we get back to this is again where the mayor needs a partner. Um, and the city council recently adopted a resolution um, that makes, uh, makes us an intervener in any of the, um, the court cases with uh, or, or the, the, the issues, excuse me, the meetings with, with FERC, the Federal Energy no, uh, Commission. Um, so um, I would just take what I have already learned and advocated for or against regarding the pipeline and bring that to the, uh, to the legislature. Stan Rosenberg, interestingly enough, and I came into the house together back in 1987. Uh, he's a terrific guy. He's somebody I can work well with. And um, I believe that I could partner with him and, and, and all others who are interested in protecting our neighborhoods. Um, I could work well with him, and I think I would. Yeah, I was happy to hear that he had written that letter. Do you support the expansion of charter schools in Massachusetts? If so, why? And if okay. not, why not? Uh, I would prefer that we not lift the cap. Uh, I would not vote to lift the cap, uh, given the opportunity on charter schools, because I think that our public dollars should be going into investing in our public schools. Um, we have a pretty good school system in Peabody that we are trying to improve. And if we take the resources that we should be gener uh, resources that we should be directing towards our eight elementary schools, our middle school, and our high school, and now change it to taking some of that and changing the rules for a select group, um, I don't think it benefits the overall city and the overall student population in the city. So I don't think it's to Peabody's benefit to do that. Okay. Uh, what do you see as other issues um, that you would like to work on at the state level? Uh, transportation, I think, is important. Such uh, as the T? Such as, well, the T, yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, in the last few weeks, as, as the T has become a uh, top story in, in the news, the questions when you're talking to people around town uh, come up about the T. Um, but I think locally, I, I look at the, uh, the little spur that runs from next to Century Bank and Peabody Square over to the Salem Depot and as a way of augmenting the progress we're making downtown and bringing people downtown is if we could run a shuttle and i've had conversations with the mayor about this and, and mm -hmm. a group of other people so this isn't uh, all, uh, some new idea that i'm bringing forward but it's something that uh, if i could work on transportation issues at the state level that would be one that would be a priority because if we could run some type of shuttle from peabody square over to the salem depot and back um, we could get some workers uh, or some people who live downtown, perhaps. Sure. We, we've had some apartments that have been created on the second floor on a few of the buildings downtown, and hopefully there will be more of that. And as we can draw in young professionals, if we could get them to the train station, which is really only a mile away from, from uh, Peabody Square, mm -hmm. a mile or less, uh, we could get them there, and they could work in town during the day, come back, and then they would be buying their coffee and picking up their cleaning and doing all the things that you need a vibrant downtown to do. Um, but we need the people and the transportation options for them to do that. That would be a great idea. I know it's always been an issue. Uh, transportation issues have always been ongoing here. Yes. Yeah. But luckily That's we have uh, the T or whatever that bus system is that goes up to the industrial park right. and goes to the malls. So. That is helpful. Um, but, but not it, the whole way. But not the, no, the, there are a lot of uh, variables, I think, when it comes to transportation. And, and, you know, anybody who commutes in and out of Boston um, knows how expensive it is. You know, it, it's a lot cheaper than parking your car in town all day. So we need, uh, we need ways to get to the subway system, to the train station, um, and the buses. Uh, but we also have to keep in mind that, um, you know, as somebody who's going in town every day, and you think it's cheap is probably spending on average about four hundred dollars a month yeah. just in transportation costs so it's a lot of money it is so tom i want to thank you for your views and opinions i think that this will help the viewers at home to understand your political leanings and help them decide peabody's best representation
Is there anything else that you'd briefly like to tell the citizens of Peabody that they oh, might not know about you? Well, um, I'd like to think people know everything mm -hmm. about me, but uh, um, no, again, I, I um, you know, obviously a lifelong resident of Peabody. I have been involved somehow uh, in the community all my adult life whether it be on the uh, school building committee when we built the Brown and the Carroll schools. Uh, I served on the school committee, as you know. Uh, while I was on the school committee, we were able to build the grandstands in the press box. Um, we had some money that was set aside and it had been sitting there for a couple of years and I was able to spearhead that project. Also, um, I was the chairman of the ad hoc committee on full day kindergarten. And we had a very uh, interesting group of people that gathered and I think a lot of people doubted that we could come to um, a resolution and implement full day kindergarten. And we did that within hours. And the city of Peabody has benefited. We have uh, the first group of kindergartners are uh, probably in their second or third year of college now. And I think it's been a positive thing for the city. Uh, city Council too, we've been able to, to work on some small projects there as well. And uh, I always like to find a project and work on it and, and solve the problem to the benefit of Peabody. So I would ask, uh, the residents of Peabody on December, excuse me, February 2nd, which is Groundhog Day. Um, if you would come out and cast your vote for me for state representative, and uh, if I'm fortunate on February 2nd to win the nomination, again on March 1st. Well, good luck to you, Tom, in the primary. Thank you. I'm pleased to welcome Craig Welton to meet the candidates. Hi, Craig. Hi, Judy. Thank you so much for having me today. My pleasure. Really nice to see you and to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. I know that um, this is your first time running for state representative. Uh, why are you running for this office? I've chosen to run for state representative because I love the city of Peabody and I feel like I have a skill set that will be very valuable as a state representative and help to continue the progress of Peabody and, and make it as strong a community as possible. Well, that's a really good reason. Could you tell <laughs> us a little bit about yourself, both personally and sure. professionally? Sure. Um, I am the father of three young children. I live on Bartholomew Terrace. And um, professionally, I work for Best Buddies Massachusetts. I'm the director for Best Buddies, and it's a social inclusion, integrated employment, and leadership development program for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I manage a staff of 18 uh, with a budget of $1.5 million, and we have uh, 6,000 participants uh, across 120 communities throughout Massachusetts. Um, my education includes a bachelor's from St. Anselm College in politics, a uh, master's in public administration from Northeastern University, and a certificate in nonprofit uh, leadership from Duke University. And I believe that my time um, with Best Buddies has really uh, put me in a position to have a great success, successful run as a state representative in um, not only representing our interests in Peabody, but collaborating with community uh, leaders from across the state as well. Well, you've kind of answered the second part. Oh, of the my question. apologies. No, my that's apologies. all right. Which is basically what qualifies you to be state representative from your personal and uh, professional qualifications? I think, um, you know, first off, the, the, the personal qualifications is, uh, would include the fact that I really want this to be as strong a community as possible. I'm raising my three children here in Peabody, and I want it to be a safe community with great schools, uh, with opportunities for them to succeed as they grow up. Um, the qualifications that I have, as, as I briefly mentioned, um, include working with many communities throughout Massachusetts. Um, obviously, having a desire for Peabody to be as strong as possible um, it is great, and I think every candidate that you speak to is going to have that same, um, that same interest and desire to run uh, to make our city great. Um, I think the skill set I have in working with others with diverse backgrounds from communities across the Commonwealth uh, is really a, an asset that I have uh, that helps me stand, up, stand apart from other candidates. Well, great. Um, what do you see as the major issues facing Peabody locally, and how would you address these? Uh, I believe the, the biggest issue uh, that will allow us to continue to become uh, even more successful um, is the opportunities that maybe we're not taking full advantage of. Um, as you know, Peabody has been designated as a gateway city, and with that comes an opportunity for us to um, qualify for economic investment from the Commonwealth, um, which I believe if we have someone at uh, the State House who's keeping an eye out for all those type of opportunities, um, we can secure funding that will help us uh, stimulate our economy through economic development, entrepreneurship, and innovation. Um, I think there's opportunities at the industrial park. I think there's opportunities downtown. 
and by securing the revenue that we need, uh, we can have great programs throughout the city. We can maintain a, a great quality of life and do so without um, you know, raising taxes significantly and keeping our city affordable. So then basically you would be concentrating on more um, activities with gateway cities? I think uh, specifically the economic development component uh, of the gate gateway cities. Um, for those of you who, who may not be familiar, uh, Gateway City is a designation uh, for 26 cities throughout the Commonwealth um, that have below average uh, attainment of bachelor's degree and a below average medium uh, household income with uh, populations uh, that would qualify you as a medium sized city. Uh, historically a lot of these cities have been transitioning away from the industrial uh, aspect of, uh, of commerce um, and focusing on finding new opportunities for business development. Um, as such, there's a, a lot of financial opportunities available through the state that I think if we have a strong candidate, or excuse me, a strong representative who's keeping an eye out for these type of uh, programs, we can really make a, a significant uh, progress towards continuing to stimulate our economy here in Peabody. Great. Well, very recently, Senate President Rosenberg wrote a strong letter to Kinder Morgan and it was regarding the pipeline. He's very concerned because it will be running through a large part of western Massachusetts mm -hmm. where obviously he is from and it will also run through other <coughs> regions in the state including Peabody. Um, how can Peabody partner with him on this to make it a stronger, I know that Mayor Betancourt has tried already, but can you see other ways that Peabody might be able to partner with Sen uh, President Rosenberg on this? I think the first thing, and I'm glad you brought that up, uh, the first thing which draws attention to the fact that we need a strong representative in the State House, and we currently um, you know, are at a void for not having someone in the State House is uh, the proposed legislation for Kinder Morgan was actually brought up by Garrett Bradley, who's a uh, uh, Democratic uh, member of the House on the, in the South Shore. Um, so it's not even someone who's in district uh, has suggested, brought forth the legislation to, um, to allow that easement for Kinder Morgan's pipeline in Western Mass. Uh, personally, I don't feel that you know, he should have a say in what happens outside of his district. Um, and I think it's first and foremost important that we have representation uh, on Beacon Hill so that that type of situation doesn't happen here. Um, I don't think the, the cost benefit analysis of having a pipeline run through Peabody is going to do anything to improve our quality of life, uh, bring additional revenue or, or additional uh, outside business investment opportunities to Peabody. Uh, so for that reason, I'm not in favor of it, and I would, I would certainly work with the Senate President, uh, if elected, to, uh, to make sure that that voice for Peabody would be heard. Great. Um, do you support, support the expansion of charter schools in Massachusetts? Uh, I'm not opposed to the expansion of charter schools. I believe uh, here in Peabody, we have to focus on the schools that we have and make them as strong as possible. Um, I think charter schools oftentimes is a community to community, to community uh, issue. Um, and I think here in Peabody, we, we need to focus on bringing in the revenue uh, so that we have the strongest schools that are possible here. Um, I don't necessarily believe that we need to be focusing on charter schools here in Peabody um, if we can work toward making our schools that we currently have as strong as possible. Do you see any ways that we could look for more funding or look uh, in different ways to strengthen the schools? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, uh, with having the Gateway City designation, you know, that, that opens us up for opportunities uh, across the board from all different sorts of state agencies and, and state funding initiatives. Um, you know, I think a big part of that is economic development and innovation, entrepreneurship. I think those are lessons that you could um, work with the local schools on. You could have high school students perhaps going to an innovation uh, district or innovation area uh, in the industrial park and having that be part of their uh, hands-on learning experience, um, you know, and, and really utilizing uh, not only the funds that are available, but utilizing the programs that are currently available in the the unique opportunities uh, that Peabody presents um, for its residents and, and for uh, students that are in our educational system as well. We've talked a little bit about charter schools, we've talked a little bit about uh, the Gateway Cities designation, and we've talked a little bit about the pipeline. So what do you see as some of the other issues statewide or within <coughs> PPD that you would like to work on if you were elected? Sure, I think statewide, um, and especially seems to be prevalent in the North Shore is the opioid uh, epidemic. Um, I think it's very encouraging to see um, you know, proposed legislation from the House that uh, will work to 
to address the issue. I think for far too long as a state, we've kind of turned a blind eye to it. And it, it's good to see that uh, both the House and the Senate are, are proactively working on that, as is the governor's office as well. Um, I think we need to really pay attention to that. Um, you know, not only is it a, an issue where uh, it affects those that are directly dealing with opioid addiction, but it affects their families, it affects the communities, it affects the, the uh, safety of the community in a, as a whole, and also the economic opportunity. Um, you know, if you have a high rate of, of folks that are addicted to opioids and you have, you know, a lot of the, the crime that can, can unfortunately come with it, uh, you're not always going to be an attractive place for businesses to want to invest in. Uh, so I think that's that's a huge issue. Um, I think also uh, the the quality of programs available for our seniors um, to be able to provide uh, assurance that you know our taxes are going to remain reasonable, so that they don't have to worry about you know living on a fixed income and having to leave their house that they've been in for 50 years. I think those are real issues that you know whether you're Democrat, Republican, and unenrolled, those resonate with everybody. And we all want to have strong programs. We all want to have uh, these type of opportunities available for our citizens, but it's, I believe it's not going to happen unless you have some significant partnerships with uh, some private businesses that are investing in your community and you make yourself as attractive as possible to bring in those, those businesses. Well, we do have quite a problem with the opioids, and I'm glad to see that, you know, you're interested in that, and I think it's something really important for not just Peabody, but for the whole state and the whole country, actually. Um, I want to thank you very much for your views and opinions. I think that it will help the viewers at home to know a little bit more about you, understand your political leanings, and help them decide on Peabody's best representation. Is there anything else that you would like to say to the people at home uh, that you didn't have an opportunity to say? Sure. I would, uh, I would just like to say if I haven't had the opportunity to meet you yet, I look forward to meeting you. I definitely want to remind everyone that February 2nd is the primary date. Um, and I'm just I'm grateful to have the opportunity to run and to be a resident of this great city. And I really believe if elected to state representative uh, that I'll be able to bring my skill set uh, to the state house uh, and to improve the community here in Peabody. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much for having me on the show. And uh, don't forget to vote February 2nd. And good luck to you, Craig, in this primary. I'd like to thank all of the candidates for coming here to be interviewed. I'd like to mention that Senator Lovely and Representative Speliotis have really watched over Peabody, but we need our own representation. So please remember to go out and vote on Tuesday, February 2nd.